Uh -huh. A goes to big A, little b, little c. A goes to little b, and c goes to little b. Okay. So the the uppercase letters are the non-terminals, and S is the start symbol here by convention. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and augment my grammar. I'll actually change this slightly. So we augment the grammar. So now I'll quickly compute some of the states in the grammar, in, in the parser. We had begun doing this last time, so I'm going to move through the, the initial part quickly. Instead of just you know, going. So if you have questions, please interrupt me. The initial part that I think we did last time, I'm just going to try and get through that quickly. Well, let's use this. This one writes. Closure of S prime goes to dot S. That's equal to okay. I one is go to from I zero on S, and that is. Closure of walk the dot across. Nah. Okay. I two is go to from I zero on little a. That's equal to closure of take that guy up, walk the dot across. And that's equal to dot A A E E. And there's a non terminal here. So A goes to dot A B C and A goes to dot B. And in fact, there's a non-terminal here, right to the right of the dot. So I should throw in the, the um, items corresponding to the productions for A, but they are in here already. They don't change anything. Brian? And so the bottom left, is that dot in the right spot? It's not. Thank you. <coughs> OK. So that's, I've done all the closures out of I0, so that's taken care of. I1 doesn't have any closures going out of it. Let's compute closures out of, I mean, go to's out of I2. So go to from I2 on big A, that's equal to the closure of, let's walk the dot across. B, E, and big A. So this guy pick gets picked up as well. A goes to A dot B, C. Right? Is that correct? Which one? Oh, yes. Uh, thank you. You guys are alert this Monday morning, and I'm not. That's correct. Good. So here, to compute the closure, I first add in everything that's here already. Yeah, 
over here. So I'm computing a closure on, I mean, sorry, go to on big A, right? So I'm going to pick up all of the items here in, in this set where the big A is to the right of the dot. And that's what I did. Right? So I picked this guy up, but there's no big A over here. So this one doesn't get picked up quite yet. Right? Everyone understand the issue here? A dot B C. And here's a non terminal to the right of the dot. So all of its productions get added in with a dot all the way on the left. And that's all that gets added. So that's the closure. So that has taken care of the go to's on this item and on this item. I still need a go to on this guy. So that's going to be a different set is go to from I2 on B, little b. That's going to be equal to, well, let's be consistent. The way I write it, the closure of pick up all the items in the set I2 that have little b to the right of the dot and walk the dot across. And that's going to be just this set itself since nothing gets added because the dot's all the way at the end. OK? All right. So that's taken care of all the transitions out of I2. So I have I3 now. So I'm, I'm going to keep doing this until I can't get any new states, right? So I'm going to look at I3. Here's I3. So I have transitions on big B, on little b, and little d, OK? So let's compute the go to from I3 on big B. That's going to be equal to, what's that? Um, I'll see if it's a new state. Sometime soon, we'll start repeating states. So I just want to hold off on naming these states. So closure of, I'm going to pick up all of the items in this set where this guy appears to the right of the dot. So that's A, big A, B, dot E. And that's the only one. And that's equal to over here, since there's no non-terminal to the right of the dot, nothing gets added by the closure. S goes to little a, big A, big B, dot, little e. And that's a new state, so let's call that I5. OK, so that's taken care of this guy. I have a transition out on little b. So go to from I3 on little b is going to be equal to the closure of pick up all of the items in this set where little b appears to the right of the dot. A goes to a little b dot c. And there aren't any non-terminals to the right of the dot, so the closure doesn't add anything. So that's equal to a goes to a b dot little c. And that's a new state, so I have, let's call it I6. Does the I6 need to be down a lot? It does. Thanks. I6. And what that tells me is that I'm confusing myself on where the state boundaries are. OK? <coughs> All right, so that's taken care of that transition. I'm sorry, that item. So I still have this item over here. So let's compute go to from I3 on little d. And that's going to be equal to the closure of what? <coughs> B 
B goes to D dot, right? So I pick up everything in I3, but this guy appears to the right of the dot. Walk the dot across and compute the closure. And what will that closure be? Yes? What I do, so let's go and look at the definition. So the question is, when do I dot the, when do I walk the dot across? So the set go to of I on some symbol X is defined as doing this. I first pick up all of the items where this guy appears to the right of the dot. But this guy is in the set I. Then I walk the dot across, so I get A goes to alpha x dot beta. And then I compute the closure. Right? That's how it was defined. Ring a bell? Well, I was just reading one earlier. Thanks for that. Yeah, so I'm, I pick up all of the items with that symbol is to the right of the dot. Then I walk the dot across, and then I compute the closure. So I've been doing this kind of mechanically, in part because it gets tedious after a while. But it's important to come back and understand the intuition of over here. What is this expressing? Because in the end, it's important that we understand what this, this repetitious computation is doing. This is saying, look, let's suppose the parser is in some state i. And we see something that x could derive. So x could be a token, it could be a, a non-terminal. If I see something that x can derive, what is the new state for the parser? To figure that out, I say, OK, in this parser state i, there's a whole bunch of items. right? I mean, you guys have seen the states that, that um, in your y dot output files. Each state has a whole bunch of different items. Each item is of the form a, you know, some non-terminal goes to some stuff dot some stuff. And that says, the intuition is that in this state i, one possibility is that the parser has seen something that alpha could derive. And now, in the continuation, one possible continuation is to see something that x could derive followed by something that beta could derive. So that's in the current state i. Now I tell you, we have seen something that x can derive. So in the next state, I have seen something that alpha x can derive. We've seen that, because we've just seen something that x, x can derive. We, and we had previously seen something that alpha could have derived. So in the next state that I'm going to, I have seen something that alpha x can derive. And a legal continuation would be something that could come from beta. So that's the intuition for moving the dot across. And the closure says, Having done that, also include all of the states, I'm sorry, all of the items that you, you could get by chasing epsilon transitions. OK? So that's what this definition is trying to capture. So over here, what's in the closure? B goes to D dot. Anything new get added? Not really, right? There is no non-terminal to the right of the dot. OK, so that takes care of that item in this set. So we've taken care of transitions out of I3. What about transitions out of I4? What? Why? So there are, there are no symbols to the right of the dot here. So there's nothing that we could make transitions on. So we are good on I4. What about I5? We can go make a transition on E. Actually, this guy needs a name. So we can, we can have a transition on this symbol over here. I8 equals go to from I5 on little e. That's going to be the closure of what? That's right. (laughs) 
I don't know, ask these guys. You guys are alert, I'm kind of half awake. Is that correct? Okay, so Brian endorses it, which is probably a bad sign. What? What do you think, Dakota? It looks what? It looks good. So okay, so, so you guys have confidence in Keith. So what is this closure thing going to be equal to? It's the same. Why? Because, because there are no anythings after it. Right? If there was a terminal, as there was over here, well, actually, that's right. If there are no non-terminals to the right of the dot, then the closure won't add anything. So good. S goes to A, big A, big B, E dot. So that's all the transitions out of I5. So we got an I5. On I6, I get a transition. <coughs> Go to from I6 on little c. And that's going to be equal to A goes to A, B, C dot. OK. So that's the only transition out of I6. What about I7? Transitions out of I7? No. The dot's all the way at the end. Transitions out of I8 and out of I9. So we have 10 states in our, in our parser. All right, so now we have 10 states and we have just about enough space to do a parse table. So in my parse table, I'm going to have shift actions and reduce actions. And let me give these guys numbers because that will make it easy to refer to them when we're doing reduce actions. So here's my parse table. Okay, I'm going to reclaim some space over here. So there's an action part and there's a go to part. My action part is indexed on on what? How do I look up my action table? Hang on, there are people looking up their notes, so let's figure this out. What do I use to look up my action table? I'm not going to say anything. Look it up. Tell me. The state I'm in and the token that I look up. Thank you. So states and tokens. <laughs> so states, I have 0 through 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. OK. Seven, eight, and nine. And my tokens are what? I have little a, b, c, d, and e. So I have So I'm going to look them up, and my tokens are little a, little b, c, d. E, and I also use the end of input marker. Okay, so there are five tokens plus the end of input marker. In this case, I have six things. 
Okay, so in state 0, I have these two items. So notice that I have an item that has a token to the right of the dot. Okay? So in state 0 on token A, I have a shift. And I have to go to a state. So to figure out what the new state is, I look up the state that I go to from state 0 on input A. And that's state 2. So I have a shift and a 2. OK? Is that clear, folks? When people are this quiet, it makes me nervous. So if it's clear, say so. And if it's not clear, say so. OK. All right. So that's the only item in state 0 there's where there's a token to the right of the dot. What about state 1? Do I have any shift actions out of state 1? No. What about state 2? Are there any shift actions on state 2? Someone come and tell me what the transitions out of state 2 need to be. No, you've done your, your piece. Dakota, do you want to take a shot? Go on, you can do it. You can handle it. You guys promise not to taunt him if he doesn't get it right. But I have confidence he'll, he'll get it. Yeah. State 2, here's state 2. So what are the tokens to the right of the dot in state 2? That guy, right? So on state 2, on input B, Yeah. This guy. So the action is a shift. Shift and go to four. Thank you. See, that wasn't as painful as it seemed. So that's all the transitions, shift actions in state two. What about state three? Oh, state three is a good one. Go on. Will you just think out loud so people know what's happening? We're doing shift actions at this point, right? Let's just write down all the shift actions. That's state two, by the way. That's state two. Oh, yeah, that is state two. Why shift on B? On D, why shift on D? Because of that guy. Okay. What, wait, wait, wait. Hang, hang on a sec. Which one are you doing now? This one. This one. Okay. <laughs> so you have a shift Y? Because there's a token to the right of the yeah. dot. Okay. <laughs> it's a trick marker. Okay, thanks. Thank you. That wasn't so bad. So we've done three. Are there any shift actions out of I4? State four? What about five? What happens on five? Can you speak up? So here's state five. So there's a shift action. So in state five on input E, I have a shift. 
and I go to state eight there, so it's shipped to eight. State six has a, tra a shift action in it. Wilson, what do you think? You want to give it a shot? Shift actions out of state six. Go ahead, Andrew. Which one is it? You can speak it out if you'd want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Six on C. Stay on nine. All right. Thanks. What about seven? No. What about eight? What about nine? So we got all the shift actions. Okay, now we need to do the reduce actions. Uh, Steve. Uh -huh. So the question is, is this what YAC is doing when it's creating Y dot output? It's cr doing something very similar. So what this process is doing is it's constructing a, a table, so these tables, for something called SLR1, okay? The reason for S, it's called SLR1 is that it's simple LR with one token look ahead. It turns out that this is not quite powerful enough to parse some grammars that intuitively seem reasonable that we should be able to parse. And the reason for that is what we're going to do real soon, which is plug in the reduce actions. So what YAC does is it uses something a little bit more sophisticated, which therefore has fewer reduce actions in it. But the essential idea is very, very similar. It's just a refinement of this, this process. Okay. All right, so we need to do reduce actions. What do I need for that? First sets, yes. Why do I need first sets? To compute follow sets. Okay, so I do need to compute first sets and follow sets. There's no getting away from that, unfortunately. Um, so here's a uh, thing. I don't have room. If I write really, really small, let's compute first sets. Well, the first sets, I'll, I'll, how would I do the easy stuff and you guys do the hard stuff? I like that division of labor. So here are the easy ones. The first set of the token A, I know what that is. And in fact, I know not just A, but I know little b, little c, little d, and little e. So I'm good. So now, you guys get to do the hard stuff. A, actually first of S, A, and B. So, first of big B is what? Is just d, right? That wasn't that painful. First of big A is little b. Little b is in it. What about there? What gets? You get empty set from this the first time around. Then the second time around, you've figured out b, so you plug that in, and that doesn't give you anything new, right? So it's just little b. What about s? Little a. Okay, so that wasn't that horrible. All right, follow set. S, A, D. We will now follow the time-honored tradition of the instructor doing the easy stuff. <laughs> now it's your turn. What's in the follow of big A? Little B, why? It's the only thing in the first set, but where does the first set come in? Follow of little B of big A is little b. But why would I consider little b? I don't know if that's the right thing or not. I'm just uh, thinking, asking you for your reasons. For all I know, your, your reason may be absolutely legitimate or not. Okay, so Brian's going to take the fifth. Keith, what are you thinking? Uh huh. Okay, so we have over here this rule, and B can follow A, so we can throw in B. 
there's also D. Why? Andrew, what are you thinking? Because big B follows A and first of B is D. Okay. And what about follow of big B? What? E. Why? Rule number one. E comes to the right of there. Anything else? No. So we, we iterate this process one more time, and nothing new gets added anyway, right? OK. So now we have the first and follow sets. So what I do is I look at every item in every set where the dot is all the way at the end, except for this guy. This guy's special. OK, we, that, we, don't, we don't do that guy yet. So we look at all of the ones where the dot is all the way at the end, like here. And I say, OK, this means that in this state, I4, I have seen something that a production for A could derive, okay, because I've seen something that the right-hand side could derive. So for everything that's in the follow of this guy, I'm going to throw in a reduce with this production. So what's in the follow of big A? It's B and D. So, oh, it would be nice if I had a different color, but I don't. So for state four, state four, follow of a B and D, so B and D, I'll have reduce with three, B and D. Those tables can get big, and this can get confusing. So let me do this one more, go over this one more time, OK? So I'm scanning through the items, scanning through each state. And for every state that has an item with a dot is all the way at the end, what that means is that in this state, I have seen the right-hand side of, I've seen something that could be derived from the right-hand side. So I'm allowed to, so I'm going to go ahead and do a reduce with this production if the next input token is something that can follow this guy. Okay, so then I'll reduce. So this is, the follow of big A is B and D. So in state four, on next input token B and D, I'm going to reduce using rule three. <coughs> okay? All right, so that's this guy here. Here's another item where the dot is all the way up on the on the end. So I do reduce actions for everything in the follow of B in state seven. So follow of big B is just the symbol E. So in state seven on E, I have a reduce with rule four. All right? <coughs> that makes sense? Brian, that makes sense? Okay. So let's see, state eight has a dot all the way on the end. So where should my reduce actions go? Dollar sign. Dollar sign? Why? Dollar signs follow S. Follow of this guy. So S, in what state am I in? Eight. And dollar, I should reduce with what? <coughs> Rule one? Okay. And so that takes care of this one. What about this guy? Rule nine, I'm in the follow of B and D. So state nine on B, I'll reduce with, with two. 
reduce with 2 and d reduce with 2. Okay? All right. So, I think does that take care of all the items? Okay. And now, I also need to define the go-to table. <coughs> go-to table is actually pretty easy. It's defined for the non-terminals. So, it's <coughs> S, A, and D. Oh, I know. I forgot. I'm sorry. I forgot to talk about this guy, the special thing. So, this item says that in this state, I have seen something that could be derived from the original star symbol. Okay? So, now, if that is the entire <coughs> input, which means that the next token is not token, but you know what I mean. The next thing in the input is end of file, then I have seen a legal construct from this grammar, legal string in the grammar. So, I1, state 1, if the next input is dollar, I accept. So, state 1, dollar is accept. Okay? And let's quickly do the, the go-tos. Go-to from 0 on S. I0 on S is I1. Um, go to of I0. So I'm, I'm doing the transitions on non terminals. This one is a, a terminal. I2 on A goes to I3. So I2 on big A goes to I3. I2 on, that's a token. I3 on B goes to I5. So, I3 on B goes to I5. I3 on little b, I3 on little d, e, c. So, that's, as far as I can tell, that's all the go-tos that are defined. Okay. So, that's my parse table. Let's take a quick two-minute break, and then we'll actually see if I got it right.